In part three of our project, we're going to be working on surface blemishes, getting ready for the paint, and installing the lights. Let's jump in. Now the next step in our restoration is going to be to start filling in the foam um, breaks and nubs and, and scratches that, that have occurred. And I'm going to start here with the cowling. Now remember we put the cowling in the hot water and we've got a lot of it coming through, but there's a lot of the area right here that's scratched and it's just been worn away, so it's gone. And then there's also kind of a gouge right here that we need to fill. And then just generally smooth it out so it has a nice smooth finish. Now, there are a couple of things you can use. You can get some lightweight spackle uh, from a home improvement store. You can get lightweight filler at your hobby store. And I just got a, a tub of this uh, foam putty uh, the other day. I would heard somebody talking about it. I hadn't used it before. So I've got that. And that's what I'm going to use in the buildup area here on the cowling. Now, as I have it open, I can see that it's pretty much like the lightweight filler that I have in the other container. So I know how to use that. It's easy to use. You're just going to pull some out with your, uh, with your finger and you're just going to kind of work it in to the, those areas where there's some smoothing or some reshaping needed. So I've got this big crack here. I'm going to really try to get, use my finger there to fill that in. I'm going to go around the edge trying to put a layer around here. Now I'm going to be pretty liberal with this stuff. Another little crack here that I want to make sure I get it all into. Because it's okay if it's rough and um, fingerprints on it and that kind of stuff. Because ultimately we're going to come through and sand it to shape and that's what we're going to want to do. So in this area now that I'm getting into where the, um, the foam has been chewed away, I may have to come back here and use uh, a couple of layers to get that so it doesn't look like it's been damaged. I'm just going to kind of press it into shape and it's nowhere near the shape I want. But I'm going to do that with the sandpaper. So I'm just kind of putting a wedge of putty along that edge where all that damage had occurred and then I'm going to be able to go in and shape it. So with the leading edge done I'm just going to kind of come back, lay some in there that I can smooth and again if there's more than one coat needed so be it. But at this point, I've got it pretty well filled up and some of the area where that foam popcorned a little bit in the hot water and where there has been some compressions, the foam putty is going to go in there, smooth that out. And I'm thinking I'm going to look pretty good here by the time I touch it up with just a little bit of sandpaper. So whether you're using the foam putty brand, the lightweight spackle, or the uh, lightweight filler, it all works pretty much the same way. And so now that I'm just about done with this, I'm going to finish that up and then go to the wingtips where I've also had that same kind of damage and get the, um, the putty on that so I can get that drying as well. Now the next thing I want to do with the foam putty or the lightweight filler, whatever product you're using, is to smooth out the rest of the, um, the fuselage and the other large pieces because you know there can be some little gaps in the foam, maybe it came that way and you can see it now that the paint is removed or perhaps you know you drop something on it, you know the screwdriver fell against it and put in a little dent, that kind of thing. So I just want to try to smooth the rest of that out. And the way that I did that, in this case, I used the same foam putty that I did before. I took you know a gob from um, the tip of my finger and then put it in a little epoxy mixing cup here and dropped in a couple of drips of water. Now it you don't need much water, just a drip at a time until you get a, a consistency that's kind of like school paste that your kid might have used or you might have used when you went to grade school. And then what we're going to do then is we're just simply going to uh, work that over the foam so that we can get that now almost liquefied filler into all those fine little cracks 
and dents. And if you happen to come across a larger dent, you just simply fill a little in around it, or you can get some of the thicker stuff right out of the container and uh, feed it into the dent. But this is going to be a way for us to kind of finish up uh, smoothing out, maximizing the opportunity of having a really smooth surface for when we get to the, uh, the painting stage of our project. And so in this case, I'm just going to continue to work my way down. I'm going to steer clear of the panel lines and then just use the brush bristles to uh, uh, dig them out if I happen to fill them up a little bit. But uh, panel lines and foam models are usually a little too big anyway, so I'm not going to worry if I get a little of that filler in there. So I'm just going to work my way around back and forth. I'm not going to care too much about the way the brush strokes are. As a matter of fact, I want to make sure that I go each way so that I can get into the little cracks and crevices in those little foam beads um, regardless of the way I'm brushing. So I'm going to go after it uh, each way. And so now I'm just going to work through the other pieces of the model. It's going to take a while, uh, but it's certainly not hard, but it's going to give us a start to a nice smooth finish. So the foam putty here on the cowling is all dry. And you remember in, um, we used just our fingers and kind of slathered it on pretty thick here simply because there was a lot of dents and cuts and so forth on this as opposed to the, the brushing technique on those areas that were smooth. And so now we're just going to get started with the sanding and I'm going to get started with uh, some fairly fine grain sandpaper. This is like about 150 grain and we're just going to work on smoothing that foam putty out. And it's just going to be a matter of working our way around, taking the high points off, getting it down to the foam, except in that area here around the front where we left quite a lot of buildup because that's where we have to replace that foam that had gotten eaten away. So we're just going to work our way around. It sands off smoothly. And then we're going to do a little bit of forming on that front corner. So I'm going to work on that a few minutes and we'll get, come back when we're ready to form the front. As you can see I kind of upped my grit and got a little foam sanding block because this uh, foam putty really hardens nice. It sands well but that very fine grit sandpaper was just going to take a long time. So I've been using this to knock down the big pop points and and uh, get it kind of in the neighborhood and then come back. So you can see I've made a lot of progress here. Got a lot of junk on the table uh, from, from my sanding. So I've got that in there. I've got the cowling looking pretty good. I'm going to go back to my fine sandpaper now and smooth it out. And it's looking pretty good. Now there's a couple of spots that I didn't get enough putty on so that there's still a couple of dents. And so at this point, I'm just simply going to add another layer of putty onto the, uh, the cowling here. But I tell you what, it's looking really good and it's feeling really smooth. And I think when I put that little piece of putty around here to, to, uh, to finish up a couple of little bumps that aren't quite smooth, then I'm going to do that paint technique with the brush and the almost liquid uh, putty to fill in some of the holes around here. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this uh, came out and it's almost ready for a little primer because as you can see there's still a little bit of red that's coming through. So we've got all the sanding done. We've got all the pieces ready to go. They're really uh, looking pretty good. Took it out back, blew it off with uh, some compressed air, wiped it down. Uh, you can see here the cowling turned out really well. I went after it with some primer and then just finished up with a little extra putty around some of those dents that were in it. So all in all, things are looking pretty good. Now it's important with a project to know what's coming up next, especially when you're not working with instructions. So the next thing in our project is going to be getting ready for the light kit because I don't want to be messing around with the surface of the model after I have it painted. We're going to be starting the installation of our light kit by uh, taking it out of its container. It's a nice little box find some other uses for that around the workshop and get an inventory of what it is that we have here in the uh, in the box. 
So in this case, we've got a co coil of wires with the connectors and the LEDs on them. They're all labeled. Some of them are doubles, some of them are singles. We can see here in the instructions what it is they're going to go to. So uh, singles to the nav lights, doubles to the beacon, um, and so forth. We've got some little uh, plastic sleeves here in the plastic kit and on some foam tape or sticky tape here uh, to mount the controller that's embedded in the lid here. I'm just going to leave that there until I'm ready to use it. Now the controller is really kind of one of the, the reasons why it's good to get a light kit as opposed to just trying to compute resistance to bring the voltage down on uh, disconnected LEDs that came in, for example, this Dynam AT6 that we're working on. And so it'll show you um, where they need to go, how to plug it in, and then the controller's programmed to give you flashing lights for the beacon so they'll blink, uh, and then steady lights for the nav lights. And so we'll just mount that either on top of the wing or in the fuselage as we see how the, uh, the wires fit. Now it's not unusual, especially from the wings, for the, the wires to end up a little bit short. So we're going to take advantage of those LEDs that we pulled out of the Dynam model itself and we're going to use that thin wire to extend the, uh, the length of the, um, of the wire so that uh, it'll fit and uh, we won't have to stretch it too tight. So when I was taking the, uh, the paint off the surface, uh, I pulled out the plug that fit into this, uh, this area right here. Now it's kind of a multi-channel area in the foam. The, the rounded part is where the foam, or where the wing spar is going to go. There's a flat space for glue, and then there's this other channel where the various wires are going to go. You'll also notice that I pulled out the LED um, that was here. Uh, it was kind of that goofy red landing light thing, and so I've got that out of there now. Now, the way I want to do this is that I want to uh, bring the servo wire out through this little crack and then meet this, this uh, panel line, and then I'm going to use this uh, uh, hacksaw blade to just kind of bring down the panel line and then bring it out to the tip so I can mount the uh, LED sleeve that came with the plastic parts in the kit right here with a little drop of CA. Now, when I was measuring, I discovered that my wire was going to be too short and so I um, added a little bit of an extension using uh, the, the thin, really thin wire that was on that other LED that I took out. So I cannibalized that and added about eight inches to the length of that wire. So what I'm going to do now is, um, you know, just make a couple of cuts here using this um, hacksaw blade, and then I'm going to spread it a little bit by rocking it back and forth to give it enough room for the wire, and then I'm going to be able to just saw back and forth gently. Okay, that looks about deep enough for my wire. I've used my hobby knife. I've carved out just a little bit for that plastic plug that goes, came with the kit that the LED snaps into. And then as you can see here, uh, I've got that mounted on the, uh, the LED. And I'm going to just use a little drop of CA to keep it, uh, keep it in there. So at this point now then, I'm just going to lay the... Uh, that little plug in the hole. And then I'm going to use a little pointed tool here that came with my uh, soldering kit to push those wires into the channel so that they're below the surface. You could also use the tip of a propeller to use that in there. I wouldn't use a knife because you wouldn't want to cut the uh, uh, insulation off the wires and cause a short circuit. That would be a heck of a thing to try to troubleshoot. So I'm just going to work my way down that slice, pushing the wires into the channel that I cut for them. And then I'm going to cover it lightly with a little of that uh, foam putty so that I still have a bit of a panel line there 
but I've got the wires covered up. You're not going to see the red and the black as they go uh, running along that uh, panel line out to the wing tip. Now before I leave this wing, I don't want to forget that there's a landing light here. And so I've gone in and gotten the white uh, LED. And this is a double, so it's got both sides of it. And depending on how you put that in, that's going to mean there's going to be one on each wing, obviously. Um, but that's going to, um, going to have to complicate our um, putting these in through the center panel. And so I'm not going to put both of these in because I'm going to have to snake it through the center panel channel as well. Uh, but I'm going to get this one in and mounted. And so I've just used my hobby knife again. I've carved out a space here at the tip where the previous LED was made it just a little bit larger to fit the little plastic clip that came with this one. And I've got that in there. And so it fits in there just very, very nicely. I'm going to use some hot glue just like Dynam did to glue that into place. And then I'll be ready to put the, uh, the panel on the top. But again, you can see there's plenty of room for these wires in the, in the channel in the wing. It's just that with this one that's going to cross the center panel, I'm going to have to start dealing with the uh, uh, center panel as well as I, we put this together. So that's going to be a bit of a pain in the neck since, since these two are wired into the, into the same connector. So just something to be aware of. Now I'm also planning to put uh, the red flashing beacons on the fuselage from the light kit. And so in this case, the, the beacons are going to go right on the center line, and that's where the two halves come together. So it's going to be easy just to kind of um, put a hole right there. I'm going to put one in the top and one in the bottom. To do that, I'm just going to use a pointed round file, and I'm just going to go in and force it in there, kind of do a little bit of sawing to get some of the, the um, foam away. There's a little bit of glue or tape that holds the fuselage together, so I'm going to work through that stir it a little bit and just really get a big enough hole that I'm going to be able to get those the wires and, and in this case um, the connector uh, through it as well. I think I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it through the bottom because of the placement of this hole. So we'll have to see how that works. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to put it just behind where the wing mounts. Uh, I've started that hole already so I'm just going to get it there with that round file. And then I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Not too much, because I can snap the clip on the light after I pull the light up through. So I was able to fish all the wires through that small hole in the foam. They're all now in the, uh, in the fuselage. Here's that little plastic clip that I've been telling you about that goes over the top of the LED. And so all that does is just you go in from below like that and it just snaps in very nicely like that. And then what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of CA. And I'm just going to put a drop of CA where the clip is going to hit the foam. Very, very small drop. There's not a lot of pressure on that, so it's just enough to keep it secure. And then squeeze it in there and push it down tight. So it has that very nice appearance. It's got the, the round um, kind of washer-like thing where the clip is right there. And, uh, and then the LED is sticking right out the top. And so that, this is a very nice feature and it has a very uh, nice professional look to it right there. Now I'm going to be painting so I'm going to have to mask that. But I don't want to be messing with the foam after I get the paint on it. So I've chosen to do that now instead. The others are going to go in there just the same way. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom and then I'll go to the other wing like I've demonstrated to you before.